Over the past few months, I've been working on my own version of a smart desk. But I wanted it to be something that would work alongside me when I'm doing tasks. Like having LED lights and screens pop up to notify me of different things. Or a monitor that pops out just when I need it and goes away when I need it to. My name's Tatum, and this is how I built my smart desk 1.0. Before we get into the video, I just want to say, the majority of people who watch these videos aren't subscribed. It's literally free and you can unsubscribe at any time. I do all types of videos just like this and some that are different, so I'm sure you'll find something you like. Anyway, let's get on to the video. So I think we'll start off with the table. We're going to do this by using three quarter inch plywood. We're going to use two pieces. We're going to glue them on top of each other. I think that'll give us the thickness and the strength that I'm looking for. Change your plans. We're going to use two smaller, cheaper pieces of plywood and glue those together. We won't get the thickness we want, but we will get the price we need. This actually ended up working out pretty well because the top layer of plywood actually was the same thickness as the monitor. So I was able to just cut that hole out and it fit perfectly. Then I just glued the boards together. Also, to anyone who says I didn't use enough glue here, you'd be right. I had to screw it down. I'm not a carpenter. I didn't know. I didn't know. Now I do. Here's another dumb moment. The entire point of me cutting out that monitor slot was that I wouldn't have to router it all out. This build is gonna have a pull-up monitor and pull-up tablet to control things, and I didn't cut out the spot for the tablet, so I still have to router it all out and do exactly what I was trying to avoid in the first place. Now in the desk, I want to be able to have LED lights that'll be able to go turn on and do nice little patterns of light or be able to be used for notifications. So certain parts will turn on if a certain thing is happening. To do that, what I'm going to do is router out a slot through the desk and stick the LEDs in there. To do this, I'm just going to use a five volt addressable LED strip. That way I can individually tell each LED what to do. I ended up using some spray foam to try to diffuse the light a little bit. I don't think this was necessary. I think the epoxy would have did that fine, but this is an extra precaution. Speaking of epoxy, I used a tabletop epoxy for mine that was able to self-level. I dyed it black, and then when I poured it on the table, I also put the tablet and the monitor into their slots, but I masked them all off so they wouldn't get epoxy on it. This is just so that the epoxy would line up better with where those holes were going to be. Also, it's important to note, though I don't show it, I have the LED lights on while I'm doing the epoxy so that I can see where it's going to be extra thick and I can level that out, just so that the light shines through evenly throughout the entire desk. So at this point, I'm pretty much done the desk, at least the top. There's a few more finishing touches that I need to do, but we'll do that later. I want the monitor to be able to lift up towards me at a special angle so that I can read it when I'm in use, and when it's not in use, for it to go back down and be flush with the desk. That's also what I want to happen with a tablet. When I need it, it'll pop up, I can interact with it, and then it'll pop back down and go and be flush with the desk. To do that, I need some sort of motor and mechanism to lift it. My first thought was, why don't we just use a stepper from a 3D printer? It's got more than enough torque, it's super easy, you can make them pretty much dead quiet. It'd be great. Um, and you could, but it's really overkill. It's kind of expensive, and it's kind of big. It's not needed. You don't need to do it that way. So I decided to look into using one of those little five volt steppers. These things are super tiny, dead quiet, and actually are geared. So I thought they might actually have enough torque for what I'm wanting to do. With this, I thought I could use this little arm and have it rotate to be able to lift up the monitor or tablet and then rotate again and it would ride along the edge and then come back down. Uh, the idea worked fine. It's just the motor itself isn't strong enough and also is so slow. But there's another option, which is servos. These have tons of torque. They're super easy to use. They're pretty compact. And I already have a bunch of them. So now let's talk about controlling this. Since the idea is I want all this to work automatically based on something I'm doing, I need to control it with Home Assistant. For example, when I walk in and maybe I turn on my computer, I want the monitor to lift up to me. I want the tablet to come up to me and I want some other stuff to happen. So that's where Home Assistant needs to do that based on some automations. However, Home Assistant can't just communicate with blank servos. 
which is why I'll be using one of these. It's an ESP8266. These work flawlessly with Home Assistant and connect to it, allowing you to basically do exactly what you do with an Arduino through Home Assistant. It's perfect. Now, when it comes to wiring these up, I'm not a fan of just connecting wires to it directly or using a breadboard to be able to connect it all. It's super messy. It opens a lot of room for air. It's just not great. To get around this, I use PCBs, which is why I'd like to thank today's sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay creates high quality PCBs for very affordable prices. For my project, I got five PCBs for only $5. That's a dollar per PCB. They offer lots of customization options, like different colors, different materials, and you can even do up to 14 layer PCB designs. Not only that, but if anyone wants to do projects like this and they don't have things like 3D printers, then you're in luck. PCBWay also offers 3D printing and CNCing services. So if you're interested, you can check them out in the link below. So I took the PCB and got it all soldered up and connected all the wires to everything. I also put it inside the case that I'm going to be using. The lid isn't on, but this whole thing will have all the wires coming out and then we'll be able to be attached to the bottom of the desk. All right, so I got a 3D print here. I expanded it a little bit on the side and gave it these extra mounting holes just for a little bit extra strength. But you can see you take a servo motor, six in there like that. I'll use a little bit of a heat adhesive to attach it in there, but the paddle will go onto the side here and this whole thing will mount under where the monitor is and it should be able to spin it and lift it up. So let's go straight doing some tests. Here I got the servo mounts all attached. This is the one for the tablet. You can see it's screwed on here and then this orange bit is what's gonna spin to lift up the tablet. And then over here, I've got the other two for the monitor. So there'll be two underneath and then they'll just spin to rotate the paddle, which will then angle the top piece up. It'll make more sense in a second, hold on. So I just got the tablet set up. I finished the first version of the codes. So it's still pretty rough, but we can kind of get a good idea as how this is gonna work. So it lifts up like that and then I can put it back down. It's a little jumpy and loud, so I still have to mess around with that. But I mean, the overall idea works. That's essentially what I want. I just want it to lift up like that. So that's not too bad. Now, unfortunately, our test with the LEDs opened up a bit of a problem. Okay, so we will do, let's just do a nice blue or something. Shit. Oh. So you might remember earlier in the video, I said that I had checked to make sure that this wasn't gonna be an issue. When I poured the epoxy, I turned the lights on to make sure that they would shine through properly on every spot. Will you also remember when I said I used uh, self-leveling epoxy? Well, I'm an idiot. And when I poured the epoxy and I checked and leveled it and everything, it was still very early on in the cure process, I guess. So it was just, it just re-leveled back to how it was before that. So everything I did was completely pointless. So that sucks, but it's okay. I've got more LEDs. So I think what I'm gonna do is just attach them to the back of it and then have the light just shine off onto the wall and that should still work perfectly fine. Now, naturally any smart desk wouldn't be complete without things like a standing desk. So naturally I went with the best and cheapest one I could find online, which was the, which was the, the, the wind, the wind desk, wind desk, wind desk, wind desk, wind desk. This desk is supposedly able to lift around 300 pounds, which I wanted because I had really no idea how heavy this desk was going to be. And it works great. I'm able to save up to four presets in it. And I do have a plan in the future for how I can integrate this desk with Home Assistant so I can make it lift up or lift down or do certain things based on different automations. But for now, we're just gonna leave it for its intended use. I also added things like a physical switch. This one has a Z-Wave scene controller. This one has up to five buttons that I can use for different automations so I can turn my lights on and off or I can trigger uh, my gaming mode automation, which just turns on a bunch of lights in the room kind of cool anyway i think i've explained everything i've added into the setup so let's get on with the demonstrations so first things first let's say i walk into the room get down i'm ready to get on my computer the press of a button my monitor will turn on and my built-in monitor will lift up towards me 
If I need access to my tablet, all I gotta do is touch the screen to wake it up and it'll come popping up towards me. And of course, using the scene controller, I can also control everything as well. If I want things to go up or go down, or if I want to disable them from activating, it can all be done with a press of a button by the scene controller. Now, what if I decide I want to play a game? Well, with the press of the scene controller, I can set my room into what I call gaming mode. It dims the lights, turns on a bunch of RGB, turns on some lightsabers, turns on some helmets, now, of course, we're all playing games. We got headphones on. We can't hear the world around us. What if I decide to order a pizza or any type of food and it comes to the door and I've got headphones on? I can't hear the doorbell ring. Well, any motion detected from my camera will then set off a light on the desk to indicate that that camera has went off. The tablet will lift up and it'll show me a live stream from the door. That way I know exactly who's here. Overall, the possibilities with this desk are endless. There's so much more stuff I can add to it. There's so much more stuff I haven't even gotten around to doing yet. And I have so many plans for the future of things that could be done with this. The most immediate one is adding a home assistant controlled drink machine right to the side of the desk. So if you're interested in something like that, subscribe. That'll be a future video.